I'm Kevin Cameron and right now we're going to talk about how the crankshaft which spins at up to 14,000 maybe 15,000 rpm in this engine at maximum performance how it is supported the crankshaft has a connecting rod connected to it at each of these crank pins and each connecting rod has a piston rising and falling in the cylinders which are along this line. Because the pistons are rising and falling that produces a shaking force. That shaking force is to some extent counterbalanced by these counterweights on the crankshaft. The crankshaft is not just a simple zigzag line like my uncle drew for me when I was five. It has the added complication of these counterweights. They are there to reduce vibration and also to reduce the load on the main bearings. Classical motorcycles of yesteryear had roller and ball bearing crankshafts. But roller and ball bearings don't last as long as people would like their motorcycles to last these days. This engine has what are called plain journal bearings, that is, Smooth cylindrical journals are supported by skinny little bearing shells. This thing does the work, actually a pair of them, they're split at the center line, just as the crankcase halves are split. This little part does the work of a great big massive ball bearing. And it does a better job because with a thin film of oil between the smooth crankshaft journals, and this bearing shell, that oil acts as a, not only a lubricant, but a damper. So that the crankshaft, supported in five places by main bearings, is very well supported. And it is clamped between the upper case and the lower case. Here are the crankshaft bearing shells here. If we were assembling this engine, this would be lowered into place as follows. And some large bolts would be put in place to clamp the upper and lower halves of the five main bearings together to form a very strong support for the crankshaft that enables it to operate at RPM up to 15,000 routinely. That is not an extreme. 15,000 represents the design point. Normality. I'm impressed.